In today's video, I'm going to show you the most efficient way to PvP people so you can get free kills like this. Let's get right into it. The first clip I wanted to go over was homing launchers in the lunar biome. It's extremely easy to lock onto people due to how slow they move and it's extremely hard to get away from it. In Ark, I think it's really important to be able to think quickly and improvise on the fly. In this clip, I was looting the drop, and while I was getting on my Bloodstalker, I noticed that there was a guy on a PT coming towards me. I quickly jumped to the side to straight his pick if he was trying to, and I planted to the wall to pick him. The reason why I chose the wall is because it's way easier to pick people when you're planted to something than it is when you're just flat on the ground. Luckily, it just picked the player off instead of the PT with him. Once I picked him, I instantly pulled out the bolus so I can bola him and he couldn't get away. That way, if he cut out, he would still be stuck there until I was able to kill him. I pulled out my sword because the Bloodstalker was tamed and didn't have very much melee. In this clip, I noticed that there was a bunch of dead tames on the ground around this drop, so I figured that there was a turret there. I floated above it to make sure everything was safe when I noticed this guy on the ground. I instantly picked him and bullied him so that way he couldn't get away, and because of a melee bob, I was easily able to sword him to kill him. In this video, I won't be showing the most skillful way to kill people, I will be showing the most efficient way, so that way anyone starting the game will still be able to get free kits like this. Immediately after killing that guy, I started looking around the drop and harvesting some of the tames. I was looking for any bags or bodies that might not have been collected yet. In this clip, it shows the importance of always keeping a stego on you when running OSDs. This guy tried to counter us by putting down a bat turret and waiting for us to go into it. Luckily, we were prepared with the stego, and as soon as we pre-netted and rushed in, I rushed in on a giga to try to bite him, just in case the pre-net timer went off, he wasn't able to net our stego. It also caused him to run away, and at that point, we didn't have to deal with him no more. In this clip, we found some people that were built in the Rag Desert Cave, and we went to go PvP him. Because I'm on a Bloodstalker and they can kill it very quickly with a shotgun, I tried to use this pillar to hide behind. As soon as he ran up close enough, I was able to quickly pick him, hop off, and bola. And it allowed me to get a free kit. This is why Bloodstalkers gotta be one of the most OP early game PvP teams, because they're incredibly hard to get away from, and they're super easy to kill people. Right here I had seen someone trying to run back into the cave so I instantly picked him and tried to hop off my bloodstalker to Bola. He grappled to my bloodstalker so when I jumped away he ended up coming with me. Because I didn't see him pop a parachute I figured he took quite a bit of fall damage from that. I just quickly double jumped again and made him hit the ground so he would die. At this point, after killing them, I had them hiding in the cave where they didn't want to come outside. One of my trap mates was on a tech suit, so this guy tried to grapple him but pulled himself out. So I quickly picked him on the Bloodstalker and pulled out my sword so that way I could finish killing him. Notice how I strafe behind him the entire time so that way he's not able to shoot me with a shotgun. Unluckily, I got stunned by the shadow main, so instead of going for the shadow main, I make sure I go for the secure kill. I knew he was already low, so I quickly killed him before I started focusing on the next person. When fighting multiple people, I always try to go for the most easiest person first because that's one less person that you can take out of the fight. When I netted this guy's shadow main, I instantly pulled out my whip because I knew he was going to try to cut it free. Normally, you can whip people's cutters out of their hand, making it where they can't cut their tame free unless they keep another one on them. In this clip, I wanted to show how important the Desmo in a support role could be in a PvP fight. So previously, I had picked that guy off the Giga, making it where he couldn't ride it. Next, I went for the Desmo Rider because I knew he was going to be our biggest threat. They had a turret trap right on the other side of those rocks, and I didn't want them to pick any of our riders and drop him into it. Right here, I had seen a tech suitor that was flying outside of his turret range, and he was kind of flying close to ours. I quickly picked him and started diving upwards and downwards, so that way it was incredibly hard to whip me off. For you to whip yourself free from a Desmo, you actually have to hit the Desmo itself. So if you look up and down and spin in circles, it makes it really hard for them to get out of it. Another really OP thing that Desmos can do is use weapons while riding it. I seen this lightning wyvern trying to beam some of our tech suitors, so I shot a net perfectly at it, netting him while he was lightning beaming, killing him. My number one favorite PvP team in caves has definitely got to be Mantis. Not only does it make it super easy to knock people out to cage him, but it fits through the majority of every single cave. You can also run through people very quickly if you level all movement speed into it. If you have tribe mates ready to grapple them, then it makes it free for collecting kits as soon as you knock them out. Another thing that they're extremely good at is knocking people out off of their tames. If you can hit one of their players through their tame, then it will knock them out as well. This makes it really easy to counter people riding stegos or any tame inside of a cave that you can run through. At this point, I'm hiding behind the corner to see if any of his tribe mates come to save him, and sure enough, a Desmo came to come pick me off. Luckily, because it knocks people out off their tames, as soon as I swiped when he came to pick me, it knocked him out. Immediately after that, some guy tried to run up on a Bloodstalker, and I knocked him out off of his tame as well, just by sitting on it and having my clubs repaired. My favorite way to defend 
any crouch cave has definitely got to be bloodstalkers. Not only do they have aimbot with the picking, but it reels people in and makes it really hard for them to get out of. In this clip, I had just got back from being AFK, and when I looked at the front wall, it had got very hectic. I noticed we had a bunch of people knocked out, so I drugged them to the side so that way they couldn't get caged. Immediately afterwards, I hopped on the Bloodstalker to try to pick anyone that might be inside the Crouch Cave. I noticed that something was highlighted, so I picked it, and it happened to be a Noglin. Luckily, I didn't run in there and just try to grapple people, because I didn't have an antidote pop that Noglin probably would have got me. As soon as the Stego died, I noticed that there was three people in the Crouch Cave. I go for the one that was farthest in the back, because I figured he could have got away the quickest. Then I go for the second one, because I knew it was going to take longer for him to get out of the Crouch Point. An almost guaranteed way to pick people through the crouch point is to pick them with a bloodstalker and instantly bolo them. When they get bullet, it makes them have to go prone, which pulls them directly through the crouch cave. And if you have a hatchet ready, you instantly want to start chopping at the body, so as soon as they die, it bags it and they're not able to grapple them back. And the best way to counter if you get picked by a bloodstalker is just stay standing, pull out your hatchet, and try to cut away as quickly as you can, and just pray that the opponents don't hit a bolo on you. C4 can be one of the most OP ways to trap people if you set it up right. We knew that this guy was going to try to hop back on his trike to either bring it back into his base or soak our fob. I seen him running up to it and I was watching him waiting for him to get close enough so that way we could blow it up. As soon as I see him getting close enough I called out to my tribe mate to detonate it and he ended up blowing it up getting the free kill. In this clip I had skiffed a guy that was flying on a wyvern through the lunar biome and he hopped off and started flying around on a tech suit to drop my skiff. I called out to one of my friends that was on a lightning wyvern so he can come help me. As soon as he was flying away from his wyvern, I quickly dropped it and started skiffing his player and holding it in front of the lightning wyvern so that way we can get a free kill. That's it for today's video, I hope you guys enjoy or learned something new. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button on your way out and I'll see you in the next one.